today from U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. This is the NFL on EA Sports. But then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. ready to get this one started and we are underway from downtown Minneapolis and this take it in at the goal line and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line the Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod Kirk Cousins Kirk Cousins is back for his fifth year as Minnesota starter, tied for the longest streak of stability the team has had at quarterback since. Get this, Fran Tarkenton in the late 1970s. He's been excellent during that time, making a second Pro Bowl last season after 4,200 yards and 33 touchdowns through the air. The Vikings, though, still hovering right around 500 at the eight-win mark, hoping to see him lead a talented roster back to the postseason. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Again, it's Cook. A beautiful fake. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Cousins gives way to Cook to the 36-yard line. Stop there. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. On play action, Cousins. And a high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. That could have been a huge play, but give the defender credit. Stayed calm, stayed collected, and kept himself in a position to make a play on the ball without a penalty. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. To throw is Cousins. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith, Jr. And 
This is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 24-yard line. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They've worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much longer. And they've established a great balance so far, running, passing, doing what they want on offense. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Cook up the gut. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. To throw, Cousins. He's got Smith here. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. It'll be a gain of five. And that's going to make it fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop it well short. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. The kick by Joseph is good, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. Even though they didn't find the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased with how they moved the ball on the ground because we know that that was one of their big goals in this game. And that really goes through the entire offense because when you're running the ball effectively, just about everyone's involved. It's not just the guy carrying the football. It's everyone blocking for him, both inside and on the perimeter. Joseph now to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Now here come the Saints about to begin their first possession. And the man in charge of this offense, his eighth season now in the NFL, former number one pick, Jameis Winston. It was terrible to see Jameis Winston suffer his torn ACL last season because he had the Saints rolling in his first year running the show in New Orleans. They went 5-2 in his starts, and they were just 4-6 and six after he was injured. And how about this? He only threw three interceptions, really addressing the big concern people had from his time as a starter in Tampa. New Orleans, they plan to roll with him for a second season and hope that last year's performance will carry over in a full season. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. Okay, partner, a couple points of interest right here, all right? Offensively, we see that they came out throwing the football, but maybe more importantly, the blitz that came defensively, they got right after it. And you were telling me pregame before we came on air, you think this is something we could see a lot. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because this is a unit that wants to play the game on their terms. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Winston. And that is caught downfield by Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 
Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. Winston now from the 50. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Winston's throw taken in by Landry. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Even in a down year statistically, Juice Landry still produced over 50 catches to lead Cleveland in his final season there. A milestone awaits Landry, though, this season. He's almost a lock to jump into the top 50 all-time for receptions. One of those goes for a first down this time. And meanwhile, Winston's throw complete there to Thomas. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. A gain of 15. And the Saints first down. 3 0 after one on EA Sports. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. From the shotgun, it's Winston. This is caught. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Camara is into the end zone for a Saints touchdown. Just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Will Lutz on for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Taken at the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. 
they'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board, but this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Demario Davis there on the stop. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Throwing, Cousins. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it and brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try to pick it up on third down. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Complete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Kamara trying to run for it, and I don't think Kamara got there. Looks like they stopped him short. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. K.J. Osborne, deep for Minnesota. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted they would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. He's been the forgotten man in this first half, not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. Up the middle, it's Cook. 
And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Cook again. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Second and nine. Cousins swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in the open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a foot. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. That's the former Buckeye Pete Warner getting the sack. Well, that was an interesting little chess match there because the offense went empty set. No running backs in the backfield. So they're trying to get people out into a route pretty quickly. But guess what? The defense sees that. They go ahead and move, it, move themselves into a blitzing situation and come right after the quarterback. They had more guys there than they could block. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Cousins now setting up the screen for Cook. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Third and long for Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. Joseph's got it. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Well, the Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. And they've got just under 50 seconds, so time enough to try to work their way downfield if they so choose. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Jameis to throw it. He'll get this to his tight end, Troutman. 
Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now a second down and six. Winston. He'll buy some time right. There's Chris Olave. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Winston on target to Olave for the Saints first. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. And the pressure gets there, and Winston goes down. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Winston a give. It's Kamara. And he's across the 40. Three extra yards to the 43. Give him four yards there, and that should be the final play of this first half. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. But they're ready for the second half, and we are too, as we'll kick it right back out to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. Fields it right around the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line can play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Now, that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now, if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Throwing on second and three. Winston flushed out right. Winston into the slide, and he's got a first down. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. He's been patient this entire game, waiting for the perfect moment to surprise him with a quarterback keeper. There he catches him off guard and converts his first rush of the game into a first down. Gotta love that efficiency. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 
10 yards, good for a Saints first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, Kamara. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. Here's Winston. Dancing to his left. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. A tenth carry for Kamara. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. And now it'll be third down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And the Vikings are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. That is a tough way to start the third quarter. You get the football open to drive it down, put it in the end zone, and take the lead. Instead, they give them the football. And I think the key here is for them to not get discouraged. That is not how they drew it up, not how they saw it in their minds. But there's a long way to go in this game. You know, they've just got to find a way to come back one play at a time. Yes, it's a cliche, but they can get it done. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 20. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he stopped right five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, Everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. From the 25 on second down, Cousins throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Just work with me a second here because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, you need to be 65 to 70% to be considered an elite quarterback. And in this ball game, I feel like we're playing old school, right around 50%. Yeah, he's under 50%. He needs to start hitting more targets. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. 
And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Out on the edge, you love to have cornerbacks like that that can bring them down to the run game. And you're also exposed to everyone. It really becomes a one-on-one -on -one play, doesn't it? You're out there by yourself on the edge. The best ones know how to make the play, and we just saw an example of it right there. A third quarter now to one-point game as they line up second and ten. Here's Cousins. It's caught. Smith will go down as a gain of six, and it brings up third and five now. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even ten years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. And he will have a Vikings first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Back to the ground, Cook. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They run it again with Cook. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 22-yard line. That third down conversion, good for 23. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he's tackled a yard short. Gain of nine on first down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. On second and a yard. Cousins, that's complete, right around the eight. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Vikings put together a fourth-quarter drive to take the lead. A late turnover is so often the difference in a ball game, and here the turnover leads to the go-ahead touchdown. So repeat after me, partner. You have to take care of the football. In order to protect the lead, you must take care of the football. 
And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Cousins will try and throw, and it is incomplete, so they can't convert for two. And now the lead stays at five. Popular down near the goal line, quick slant. Nice job there to get in, knock it away. It was one of the other things you're concerned about when you throw that route is to make sure your offensive linemen use their leverage to get the hands of the defensive front down so you can throw it through that little bit of crowd and get it to the receiver. In this event, they did, but a nice play by the defender knocking it away. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And from the end zone, Deontay Hardy will bring it out. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. The New Orleans offense set to take over. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Winston and the Saints now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Just a gain of a couple there, and that'll bring up second down. Working out of the gun, Winston. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there, finding him in stride for really good yardage. First down, Winston. Thomas has got it, complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. A good gain on first, has them set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. To the air again with Winston. And they get this one underneath to Camara. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Yeah, see if you can get it to your running back. See if you can make someone miss in the open field. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Winston. Alvin Camara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it's second down. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. The Saints in the hurry up here. Clock continuing to roll. Winston. He gets it to Thomas. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. Hey, 
Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Winston to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Desperation time. Winston on fourth down. And the comeback may stall out. It's intercepted. And the Vikings have just about sewn up this football game. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 40 here's cook as they begin on the ground and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four second and six now a timeout called for by the defense as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four Second down, they go right back to Cook. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.